we thought a lot about uh, before we came out and set up Ascendant on our own. Uh, my partner and I, uh, and partner Kevin is also an SOM alum, class of 94. Um, so we talk a lot about what's going to happen in Chinese private equity in the next 10, 20 years. We actually thought it was the right time to do it on our own. Um, you know, Blackstone, KKR, Carlisle, uh, maybe, you know, TPG, maybe with the exception of KKR. I mean, you know, these major names in the U.S., they started somewhere around 20, 30 years ago, right? And, uh, and they grew very fast um, because the country was, uh, uh, you know, undertaking that kind of uh, trend and, 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 and that was happening. In China, we thought the same things that is taking place. Um, it used to be dominated by international private equity firms. Uh, they have their clear advantages, and we can see some disadvantages as well. We all used to work for those large firms, um, trained um, and having set higher standards for our operations. But at the same time, we're more local. And we actually truly understand where, what's happening in China, where China's going. And yes, there's a lot of competition, uh, and there's always competition, but we, we do view that Chinese private equity is still in a nascent stage of development. Uh, it may hit an, an intermediary bottleneck, um, but with the country growing and with um, more uh, receptin, uh, you know, reception for private capital, um, and, and the pie will become even bigger. We are looking at a lot of the demographics changes and how China uh, growth, uh, where China growth is, is going to come from. Urbanization is a big theme. Right? Um, and so we focus on, on consumption quite a bit, uh, on the food beverage side. Uh, we focus on the urbanization related theme like uh, high speed rail. Uh, we focus on upgrading of basic manufacturing, so we call it advanced manufacturing. We focus a lot on control systems because these are the things that can automate Chinese basic manufacturing. It's no longer going to be the world's biggest factory, or probably will still be the biggest factory. Hopefully, uh, will, they will turn out to be the world's best factories. And that will take 10, 20 years. And that's an ongoing trend, uh, very important. And, and so we would invest in those control system, advanced manufacturing, and, and then focus on demographic changes, on health care, on consumption, um, and on, on, on high-speed rail, uh, which is really changing uh, how uh, all the cities interact uh, within China. When I did an investment in Nanjing, a city about 200, 250 kilometers uh, from uh, Shanghai, 10 years ago, it takes a long, took me a long time to drive from Shanghai to Nanjing, there's no flights because it's too, it's, it's just too short. And, and you couldn't, you know, you have to stay overnight and come back the next day. Today, from Shanghai to Nanjing, it takes less than an hour train. So you could literally have breakfast in Shanghai, you know, have a breakfast meeting in Shanghai, and then you go and take the train to have a lunch meeting in, in Nanjing, and come back, you know, for an afternoon or, or, or dinner meeting in Shanghai again. So that's changing uh, uh, how things are gonna work out uh, in, in China. And we're, so we're identifying these trends and look at the ancillary industry. So you know, we're not going to invest in rail because that's heavy, capital intensive, really government driven. But the things that, that, that support or supply uh, to the rail sector, components, systems, that'll be very interesting because there's a huge demand for it. And we'll look at food beverage, branded food, branded beverages, you know, but the high valuation. Um, but then we look at the ancillary industries you know, the packaging side of it, the bottling side of it, uh, because, you know, they're brand agnostic and demand is huge and per capita consumption has continued to grow. It's still a huge lag between the developed world and in China. Healthcare, pharmaceutical, uh, and there, there are a lot of areas. It's just focus on the big picture of demographic changes and, and the policy-driven urbanization theme. Uh, you, you know, there, there are ample opportunities down the road.